I would like everyone just to stand, right? <laughs> now, why am I asking you to stand? Because we are aware of the, the health benefits of standing or breaking up sedentary time. So one thing that's really emerging in our space is the notion that prolonged sitting or sedentary behaviour has, um, has a negative impact on our health. And, and there's evidence in adults that this is independent or, you know, of any activity benefits that you do. So you could literally do exercise and go back and sit down a long time and you will, you will be you know, at a disadvantage because of that uh, too much sitting. So go ahead now, you can you feel like, if you feel, if you feel we'd like to continue to stand, that's perfectly good too. So, a lot of the meetings I speak to, people will just stand up, and it's not because they're giving me a standing ovation, <laughs> it's because they're taking a break. So, I'm going to talk about screen time and from a physical activity or a, um, sort of a public health perspective. We've had a really interesting talk in terms of the sort of social interactions and uh, from media to um, so education in general, and, and I think they're really valuable and super um, lessons that I've learned from those things. And one of the things I think is important to emphasize here is that these are recommendations that are uh, placed in a context of sedentary time. And too much sedentary time is not a good thing. And we're, we're, coming, we're, we're really behind our cultural uh, phenomena of technology in that most of our uh, guidelines, our recommendations around screen time that relate to health are going back to television watching in a very traditional way or a computer video game where people would sit and interact with a console uh, or in front of TV and really not do anything. So really need to open up with that context. So if we, I think you are willing to do that. So uh, part of my background, I'm a uh, physical activity and exercise scientist uh, with long-standing interest in uh, uh, preventing obesity and other types of things and promoting uh, kids to be uh, physically active. And uh, part of my work uh, was involving, involved, you know, coming up with guidelines for the physical activity for children under five. And, uh, and we tried to make this an evidence-based, you know, we scoured the literature, you know, exactly how much physical activity someone needs to do to, to gain health benefits, whether they be traditional cardiovascular risk factors, adiposity, uh, educational outcomes, social incomes, cognitive developmental outcomes. And so you're probably quite familiar with this uh, as well, that you know, basically we, we really want uh, to, you know, to start physical activity at an early age and we should encourage uh, mothers you know, while they're actually you know, uh, you know, carrying their children to be healthy as well. And lots of in utero health benefits of that. But uh, ultimately, by the time they get to, uh, you know, out of the toddler years, we're really recommending that they do at a minimum of at least three hours of any movement, really, essentially, a day. And uh, that's a little controversial in that, like, right now, if I was three, which I wish I was, <laughs> but three, uh, I'd be contributing to those minutes by standing, the way the guidelines currently uh, has been uh, Written. Now, one might argue that, that you know, active play is really what we're trying to promote here. In, in, in conjunction with other forms of important play, active play has a, has a major role in healthy child development, and we're trying, it's all about encouraging that. If we move on to the next slide, uh, we actually, it's kind of strange when you think about it, how our field, in a way, is talking about screen time as a guideline, because it's really about preventing sedentariness and not about uh, promoting educational and cognitive development. But uh, you know, the original uh, kids' guidelines for five to 18 year olds simply adopted the American Academy of Pediatrics of doing the two hours a day. Uh, the ch the, when we did these for the children under five, we actually went a little bit further and said that, that, you know, that kids two to four should only have one hour a day, not even two hours a day. And, uh, and you'll see that we also uh, mentioned that we should be avoiding prolonged sitting. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how many people think that prolonged sitting is a major problem in, in 
either any form of childcare or educational setting, there are a lot of prolonged sitting going on. Do you think so? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, it'll be interesting because we measure this sort of stuff with accelerometers, and, <laughs> and it's it's maybe a perception, but um, it, it, I think it, and it does come down to the context. So, so these are the re recommendations. Children less than two, uh, you know, shouldn't do any screen time. And that uh, older kids should be limited to essentially one hour uh, or less than one hour a day, and that all kids should have. Uh, avoid prolonged periods of sedentary time, even prolonged sitting. Okay, so next slide. So how are we doing? Uh, so if you're not familiar with this, uh, we recently uh, participated in an international undertaking where we we all got you know graded on you know how we're doing on physical activity, sedentary behaviour, those types of things. And Australia has got a D minus uh, for a sedentary behaviour. Uh, we just fit in nicely with the rest of the world in terms of the class. Uh, but you can see that, you know, 20, you know, 29 percent of five to seven year olds, but here we have 26 percent of Australian children aged two to four accumulate uh, no more than one hour of a day. So the vast majority of, of children two to four, and this is from the uh, ABS data, uh, yeah, they're, they're really failing to meet a guideline. But on the other hand, there's also information that they, uh, when you just measure it as a more continuous outcome, that on average, they meet that guideline on four days a week. So perhaps there's days where they do much more television watching than others, and so it does sort of average out to be more than an hour. But So this suggests that when we have a, a recommendation on screen time, that is essentially, I think, couched in an idea of that screen time is sedentary behaviour and should be avoided, uh, or that sedentary uh, screen time is bombarding you with violence, um, you know, food advertising, those types of things, those, that's where the issue comes in. It does not take into account the, the technology and how it's used today in terms of iPads and so forth. So we move on. Okay. So how are we doing? So we did a study quite a while ago in a representative sample of southeast Queensland and the Illawarra uh, um, Wollongong area, uh, Tony Oakley and I, and we uh, this was on based on parent self-report. You know, uh, we've validated this as a self-report, uh, but we found a slightly different area. Um, and so when when we presented this as two hours of of television watching, and we looked at this on weekend days versus weekdays. And most of the parents reported that they actually uh, watch less than two hours a day. So about three quarters, about 75%, give or take some. You can see that uh, boys report more television watching than girls. And so as a preview, like if we're really worried about physical activity, are boys more active than girls? Generally speaking, we find that in the literature, but they still watch more TV. And just keep that in mind because it is about time use and the, how that time is packaged and what they do when they watch TV, etc. So, so that's the uh, vast majority would meet the guideline based on that, our, our research there. Now, uh, so this is just, uh, I put this slide together today, this is from uh, analysis of about 48 childcare centres that I recently completed, and I will admit that it is from the United States where I was working until about 2012. Now, uh, this idea that kids uh, are doing prolonged bouts of, of, of uh, sedentariness. And so with accelerometers, we can measure what they're doing every second over a week. So we're actually pretty good at that. And what this is, is really just the total number of bouts of, of sedentary active. So now this is not, basically they're not moving. So they could be standing, but they definitely aren't walking, running, or doing engaged in active play. We define about as a period of one minute or more, okay? So we looked at the number of bouts that just lasted one to four minutes, the number of bouts that lasted five to nine minutes, the number of bouts that lasted 10 to 14, and then the so-called prolonged bouts, 15 plus minutes. Why did I do not do 30? Because there aren't any. Mm. But in any case, you can see that the vast majority of them, so in total, they did about 36 or 40, bouts of sedentary behaviour a day on average. And this is based upon about four days of, of, of monitoring it 
uh, for complete time at a childcare setting. Okay, so this is not at home. This is about uh, the type of behaviour they're engaging in a childcare setting or education childcare setting as well. And you can see that, yeah, so girls have more sedentary bouts than boys, but you can see that the vast majority of them are in short bouts of one to four minutes. Now that's not to say that that's not of, of concern, it just means that when we're talking about our guidelines, that we probably aren't going to get a great deal of kids who are doing prolonged bouts, at least in an early childhood uh, education setting, Maybe if they're in the car seat, driving a long distance, those types of scenarios. However, um, and there's no interventions, these are just taking, this is just uh, everyday practice there. But Did yes, you so, do that in primary schools as well? Like in primary sorry. schools? No, no, this is all about kids under five. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. But I now, think it would be different. Interesting to look at five years and Well, when we do, we still don't see that. Oh. So, so it's... You know, when you measure it objectively, you get different answers to what parents report or what the perception is. So, I mean, again, they could be watching, but they get up, they might move, you know, those type of things. So, so that's not to say that we should be, uh, you know, not worried about it, but just saying that, you know, when we talk about the guidelines, they're really kept in evidence that it's probably being sort of superimposed from adult or, or an older child model into early childhood. So I think that's fair enough. Okay, next slide. Okay, so you know this is so we do another uh, in this same study we measure policies and practices around uh, childcare. Okay, and one of the one of them was that kids are allowed to use the computer uh, for educational reasons or video or, uh, or playing a game for for any reason uh, any time during the day daily versus maybe less than two or four times a week or you know or once a week. So I say pass and fail because it's easier to put on the slide. I don't sort of use that terminology very uh, readily. But so on our left slide, we had the number of bouts. Again, this is the number of bouts that lasted between one and four minutes, the most common bout. And what we do find though, if you, um, I probably have this mixed up, but if you let them watch computers, uh, if you let them use that computer daily and throughout the day, you can see that there's a much significantly higher number of bouts of sedentariness. And, uh, and this is just the time. So within that, there is about 70 plus minutes per se. So this is averaged over all kids in a centre that failed or passed that uh, guideline about their, or their policy around computer use. And it's controlled for gender and wear time and clustering and all that type of stuff. But, uh, but it does, uh, so while we don't have a lot of bouts, it does so that if you do have policies or practices in place that uh, provide um, easy access to a, to a computer in the, and again, this is sort of maybe in a more traditional way, not an iPad, that it could increase the number of sedentary. Okay, go ahead. So, so why are we so down on screen time, I guess? And I think this is the, sort of the reason that um, and I think it comes down to the context, and I think Sydney really nailed it. I mean, it's all about parenting <laughs> and, and about effective uh, use of time and appropriate policies and practices. If this, is how if this is how screen time is used, then from my perspective, it's cutting down on opportunities for active play, uh, movement skills, etc. Uh, and it's also denying social uh, interactions, development of, you know, vocabulary, listening, speaking, all those things. So, so I think that is why we have such a uh, passionate sort of response to uh, having screens in, in front of kids at an early stage. And, and, you know, I am sure that we are still using the, the, the television or the iPad as a babysitter and that our efforts are really, you know, educating teachers and parents about effective use of, of that, just like our two speakers have already said. Let me move on to probably why we are so upset about this, and this is really old. So this really, in 1993, this study came out that said kids watching television, their resting metabolic rate went below uh, a resting metabolic rate. So when you're watching TV, you're at the lowest metabolism possible. So we know that resting metabolic rate 
number of calories you're burning, just sitting and doing living, is a great big you know, determinant of weight status. So, uh, and that's a, sort of the, the fuel that drives our, our metabolism. And this study, and they did the order, etc. So when kids were watching TV, see in the dark, in the in the in the dark bar there, but their their resting metabolism actually was significantly lower. And they saw this both in overweight and obese children as well as healthy weight children. So that that made a huge splash. That uh, prior to this, a paper was published by Bill Gates named Do We Fatten Our Children by the Television? That's the name of the song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this was some of the some of the research that was informing it. If we move on to the next slide, when they tried to replicate this, Bill Deeds in later study in 94 in American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, where they measured uh, resting metabolic rate. Now these are not just television watching, but just sedentary activities, sitting, reading, and TV, and we could today put iPad use, those types of things, uh, both in obese and non-obese, there's really no significant difference in resting metabolic rate. Okay, so so that really that no one has been ever able to replicate the finding that watching us being in front of a screen and watching TV reduces your metabolic rate. Okay, so uh, if you were probably on a bed sleeping while watching the TV and compared to just sitting and watching it. Yes, you might see a difference, but when you look at this as in the context of doing an activity like reading or sitting or doing TV, there is no effect. So, you might, uh, move, next one if I want to repeat with that. Oh, no, go back, I just wanted to make that. It was a very similar looking slide. But one of the things that they did during that study was they measured their activity while they were doing those three activities. And it, it was an interesting thing that when we look at uh, TV watching and the obese kids and versus non-obese kids, that overweight and obese kids actually did move a lot less or significantly less than their non-obese counterparts. So there may be some susceptibility there in terms of like when they are in a situation that isn't predominantly sitting or sedentary, that they just move a whole lot less. So they, so they may be more uh, susceptible to, to sort of an energy balance problem there. Okay, move on there. Okay, so in terms of our discussion paper, which really informed the, the uh, development of the guidelines around screen time, uh, this is the sort of the process that we do in terms of levels of evidence. And I, I do apologise, I don't have cool videos, I put boring tables. But, <laughs> uh, but you know, someone's got to do it, I guess. I don't, you're not supposed to really remember too much about these things, except uh, a couple of things. First of all, the plus plus means there's consistent and strong evidence of an association. Okay, and of all the um, health outcomes or outcomes that were looked at, and you can see there's adiposity, poor diet, uh, cardiovascular health, a range of traditional things. Uh, someone needs to ask me about the smoking, if you, well, I'll happily answer that. Um, <laughs> and then musculoskeletal is really bone, like bone density, and then some of the other benefits which, you know, uh, you know which really do fall into the you know, child development realm there. You can see that pretty much there's really no real association there for much of anything. Uh, interesting, so the, uh, adiposity, so the more television you're watching, the more is, uh, you're more likely to have a BMI above a certain threshold or a correlation that's positive and significant with body mass index or some indicator of body fatness. You say, great, but the level of evidence, that means like an A is randomized control trial, B is control trial, and C, cross-sectional, and then D is really expert opinion. You can see that of all these, these are basically C's and D's. So only two of those outcomes are based on consistent cross-sectional data. So we really can't infer any causality. We know that overweight kids may select to watch TV rather than causing them to be obese in the first place. Motor development, now that's a key one. So in terms of, you know, totally embrace that we need to promote uh, fundamental movement skills in an early childhood setting. If uh, in this particular study done at a fairly large Australian study, there was no evidence of an association between sedentary time, and that as far as it wasn't screen time, it was moving not very much, and, and motor development. Okay. There is a relationship between physical activity and motor development, but not time spent being sedentary. Okay. 
So, so if we go to the next slide, we can, I'll just take the expert. You know, there's moderate evidence that time spent watching has a detrimental effect on that on adiposity. And, and I didn't write this. So the exposure to a large amounts of non-educational programming can hinder cognitive development. So that might be fair enough in a very traditional way when, uh, when I put in a baby Epstein video and expect wonders to happen, that something magical is occurring in the absence of any interaction or, or skills or, or thought. Uh, now, interestingly, the, um, you know, Musker's evidence for musculoskeletal health, social and emotional development is all inconclusive and there's no evidence that sedentary behaviour is detrimental to motor development. So on the basis of that, why do we recommend that? I think it's because we do know there is a relationship between TV watching and exposure to food, advertising, that people are more likely to eat unhealthily if they're parked by the television. There's a whole range of other uh, child developmental uh, reasons for, for recommending that television time in this traditional way be uh, limited or moderated. Uh, the, the actual effect on the physical activity is fairly modest, but not insignificant. So if we go to the next slide, we can see, I'll just skip that one because that's just too much. So <laughs> this one's a little bit, but, but what that slide said is well, if you take all the studies and average them, uh, the correlation is less than 0.1, the relationship between screen time and physical activity. Okay? So, you know, so the more, there's no relation, you can be very active and watch a lot of TV and vice versa. So there's no real relationship. Now having said that, like, should we not be really blasé about this? And this is old data, but this is, I think, a good take home message. This is, this is a hard study to do. These are direct observation studies like you're doing you're in people's homes and you're directly observing. And this uses a, a children's activity rating scale. And you, it's a little tiny, but it's a one to five scale where one is pretty much just dormant, right? Five, you're running very fast, okay? So when you're watching TV, you would expect maybe ones and twos, correct? And threes when you actually get up and start doing something. So this is the average car scores while you're doing certain things. And uh, so when you're inside, you're less active than outside. That, so that's the thing. We do know that kids are more active outside. Now, if you just increase time outside, it's not going to be sustained. <laughs> okay, so we've done those interventions. Let's just increase it, time outside. You know, let's you know, not worry about other things like skin cancer, those type of things. Let's just get them outside forever. It, it does, it plateaus. You need to do something with them after a while. So outside, is inside no TV less active? When they're watching TV, we're even less active. And then during their longest bout of television, which was probably on average about 16 minutes, that this was their, you know, when they're really engaged perhaps in TV, that that was when they're lower. So this does confirm that, you know, if you do have kids in a situation of exposing them to screen time, more like a passive screen time where they're not engaging, they're not able to move, so it's a traditional watching TVs or videos or playing with a computer at a computer desk, that type of thing, you will probably take away from their opportunities to be physically active. Depending on how much TV is the extent, it probably detracts from their physical activity. Okay, so um, our, my take home messages are that at least on the evidence that we do have, most of the kids, most of Australians two to four aren't meeting the guidelines for screen time, but there's conflicting data out there. Uh, of, you know, even on the physical activity side, when we measure it objectively, <laughs> most kids don't meet the guidelines. When we get parents to report it, most kids do meet the guidelines. So we don't really have great data on that. Um, from what, some information, I think we need more information, but um, what we see is that uh, prolonged bouts of sitting appear to be quite rare, but there's a lot of one to four minute bouts, which could be uh, an indicator of too much, uh, not enough active time there. So we have to, uh, and that accounts for quite a lot of sedentary time. Uh, so screen time recommendations are really based <coughs> on developmental outcomes. Uh, they really, they've taken the AAP, they've taken the evidence for them and really adopted them. But um, we can't really base them on really hard evidence of sedentary behaviour and health outcomes. 
but, none, uh, so, but having said that, you can see an intuitively sensible that you know, screen time in, in a context and how it is, you know, as, as Susan said, how it's, how it's presented can have a negative impact on physical activity. You've seen it with kids doing a, a timed run. You know, we are developing apps for people to exercise. We are, so they can be used, but if they're in a negative way, it can be detrimental. Uh, so there, there is another good reason, besides that many other child development outcomes to limit screen time, uh, and we can just reinforce that. Okay? So I'll stop there, and thank you very much. Thank you.